Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Eliza Barr. This is Delivered Up from the Slimy Pit, the inspirational true story of James Reed. Now, I went looking for who this dude is, and if James Reed here has a Wikipedia, you know, entry, I got no idea who this guy is, all right? There's a lot of James Reeds over the years. And this guy's story doesn't really look like it at a glance that it fits any of the ones on Wikipedia. So interestingly, I think this is just a comic about like a normal person's life, which is amazing. It's astounding. A lot of books you buy, you know, are straight up just uh, fanciful, fictional material about, you know, alternate universes or people with powers or people who are like special, or if it's a biography like this is, it's a biography about like a famous person like James Reed, the blues musician, James Reed, the judge, James, Jim Reed, the outlaw. Like I said, there's a lot of reads here on Wikipedia. So this guy, James, he uh, came from, well, not exactly a great family situation. Like, you can kind of see the, per the kind of person his dad is, and that kind of set James up for the life that he ended up going through. At least through, uh, you know, his young adulthood, which is what this book covers. It's up to probably in his, like, early 20s. Maybe mid to late 20s. So, Pops uh, hits the sauce, Gets home, gets a little rough. Eventually, his family, because James has a couple sisters, I think, little brother, they head for the hills. And they flee to Oklahoma or something, right? Okay, we're cool. Mom gets a job at the paper plant where they make cardboard, and all they can afford is to rent this little thing. Now, you got to keep in mind, this is the 50s, dude. Little things like social safety nets, uh, it was all charity-driven at this point. There was a lot of charity, mind you. But there's also, like, elements of pride and stuff that kind of go into people not seeking that stuff out. So, uh, yeah, they were living, like, next to the toxic waste dump <laughs> I mean, look at this. Apparently that's a city dump, and it's just got a trash fire burning all the time. Like, that's not exactly good. Then there's, like, the paper mill back there, the polluted river, and not knowing the dangers, James and his sister would sometimes wade in the poisonous water. I mean, look, we all did stupid stuff when we were kids, right? So his pops eventually finds them where they've ran to. And the cycle of life and violence continues. And they're not exactly living like a great life to begin with. I mean, they're like eating out of dumpsters and stuff. Uh, it's rough, man. That's how life is for some people. Well, it doesn't take James long for him to uh, fall in with the wrong crowd, do uh, like some juvie stints, and then get hooked on the good stuff, you know? And while I may joke about stuff, like, I'll be talking with Six or whatever, he's like, oh, man, I'm so tired. I'll be like, Stella, try the good stuff. Do a line. You know, I hope everybody knows I'm joking when I say crap like that. Like, I do not actually want you to go become intoxicated. So anyway, dude's, uh, dude's dancing with the devil in the pale moonlight, and things just keep going worse for him in his life. We're talking like real gel stents. We're talking about uh, him hanging out with a bunch of hippies. And he's such a weirdo that the hippies kick him out. Uh, think about that for a little while. The hippies kick this dude out. Becomes a biker. Meets a girl. They fall in love. Dude's uh, the, the girl's uh, brother. <laughs> because he's doing just like his dad. So dude's brother gets a gun and, uh, well, sucks to be him. He hits rock bottom. He goes to an asylum and he's going to go make a drug deal. And a little voice tells him just to leave. And so he does. 
He follows what the little voice says. He goes out, and this random couple, they're driving along, they do a Yui, they stop, they talk to him, and that's all it took for this guy to turn his life around. The right person... Hold on, there was some really cool art in here I want to show. The right person at the right time in the right place and I know some of you out there are going like, oh boy, it's a Jesus comic or whatever. Get over it. Uh, the art. Like, come on, some of this stuff looks really cool. But that's what life is about, is helping people. Going out there, being the right person at the right place at the right time, helping somebody, and helping them turn their life around. It's harder and easier than you might think it is. You know, the hard part is being the right person. The easy part is just being there at the right time because you'll know when it's that moment, when there's a chance, like a place that you can intervene. Like one time, I was going into Walmart, uh, me and my dad, and I was 10 or something, and this little kid who was like five uh, was sitting on a, uh, in, in the push, like the shopping cart, right? And my dad knew what was about to happen before it happened. He had that. You know, he had that moment. He was in the right place. He just had to be the right guy. And he was. That little kid basically fell out of the shopping cart. And he went, like, across 20 feet. Like that. Like dad reflexes, man. Dove, caught that kid for he could crack a skull on the concrete. That, that's like a very physical example of being the right person in the right place at the right time. So I ate this comic up. Like, my shop man, I think, kind of gave this to me, assuming I was going to make fun of it. Like, I do a lot of the stuff uh, that I get out of the dollar bin. Like, we were looking at Scarlet Scorpion uh, and Dark Phase, or whatever his name was. But this book is very, like, it's raw, because this is somebody's real life. And you can look at it as like, oh, it's a little preachy or whatever, but this is some dude's real life. What he went through. The sheer rock bottom he hit. Like, when he talks about being in the slimy pit, he ain't kidding, dude. He was down about as far as you can go. Uh, we didn't even talk about all the stuff his dad did. Like, we kind of shot through this stuff super fast because I don't want to read the book for you. But if you see one of these and you are interested... Oh, there's... Huh. There he is, man. For real. If you see one of these, you know, it might be... uh. Might be an interesting read for you. I know I certainly thought it was. Uh, it, it's true. It's raw. It's got that edge to it. And seeing somebody turn their life around is wonderful and uplifting. You know? Because people need a hand up sometimes. And if you can be the person to do that for them, more power to you. You know? All right. I'm going to get off the soapbox. You all take care of yourselves. You have a great one. Hope to see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye. Dude, did I even tell you about the comic book? I just think I kind of ranted or something, but hey, whatever. That's life for this issue, this episode.